Hello, everybody out there, or should I say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I can see that we have multiple countries and regions represented on our, on our meeting here, which is great in this connected world we live in. So just a little bit of background before we jump in. Uh, today is a, a complimentary training session, if you will. Uh, Mr. Riaz, our president and founder, is kind of expensive when it comes to paid consultation. So uh, ahead of the busy Christmas season, uh, we thought we'd uh, corner him to, to do this session with us to, to answer some common questions out there. Uh, we get a lot of questions uh, from you know various laser operators and, and even manufacturers. Uh, so why are we doing this? Well, we, we created Cockpit 3D software for, for our own internal use. Uh, there was a need that, that we were having internally. So uh, the software was created for our own 3D artists to utilize, but then the vision kind of grew uh, such that we should also enable the laser owners and operators that are using our conversion services. So they've got some power using our software on their end. So, you know, whether you're a laser operator or a laser manufacturer, uh, you know, this software, you know, definitely empowers you on, on your side. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. Riaz, our president and CEO. Thank you very much. Hey everyone. Thank you. I see uh, New Zealand on. I see Dubai on, so it's like early morning, late night. This is awesome. Thank you all for joining. And um, I hope this is going to be a good information session for uh, each and every one of you. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to anyone out there first. Um, is there anyone that wants to uh, ask uh, a question? Ken, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, not a question, but a comment. Quality of that uh, Cockpit 3D software that has been released, the version that I'm using, is absolutely phenomenal. It, it is a different beast than what I started with three or four years ago. Um, the back end of each image inside the crystal, when it's done, is almost 4D. It is superb. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Ken. That means that means a lot coming from you and from uh, all those that are using the software. That that's really what gives us motivation to continue developing it. So thank <laughs> you very much for that. All right. So what I'll do is then I'll, I'll actually hop in. One, one question. Yeah. Yes. One question from our side. We are operating uh, a lot of these Serion machines and we are struggling a little bit with the, um, with the, the, the laser power and things like that the, the quality of your 3D conversion are fantastic. But then when we then laser engraving, we are struggling because we have like four different retail machines. What is a good tip perhaps from your side? How do we set our lasers in the best way that we have the optimal results? Okay, great question. So um, the best thing to do for any laser, uh, whether it's a European laser or an Asian laser, I have to say first and foremost, there's a misconception. The misconception that most people uh, assume is, is that having a European laser is going to generate um, optimal quality. And that's generally how manufacturers are going to market themselves. Um, certain Asian manufacturers are going to say that they are better than others. Uh, what I have to say is that as far as the laser strike quality, um, they're all using 532 NM, so green beams. Um, and so they're all super fine and able to achieve good quality. Where the difference comes in between uh, a good Asian manufacturer and perhaps an Asian manufacturer that isn't doing as well is when it comes to the mechanics. Okay, So um, you don't want to have a laser um, just stop shooting or not shoot centered or have a situation where the um, power is volatile, where sometimes it's burning super clean and other times it's very, very weak. So that's where the difference comes in. It's not on resolution. Um, and so the best thing I would always say is first and foremost, before uh, you're purchasing your next laser, uh, send them a file that you've generated from Cockpit 3D and don't send them a 5080 file, okay? Because those are easy to burn. Send them like a mantle file, something that would fit into a, a 180 by 120, for example. Uh, and then get them to burn that for you and record the timing of how long it took to burn um, and the actual burning of it so that you can see the final quality of that file that you sent. Now, um, as far as the question that you just asked on um, calibration of your laser, the best way that I recommend to do this is to select a photo uh, off of Google that has both dark and light in it. So the best example I can give you is of someone, a wedding photo where someone is wearing um, a black uh, suit and then next to him is the white 
dress of the bride, a mixed couple where you've got dark skin and light, light skin. Um, and so you've got two different tones. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to create your point cloud in Cockpit 3D uh, and send that file to your laser and burn it and see after burning it, has the white dress cracked? Um, if the white dress hasn't cracked and your point space settings are like what we generally recommend, uh, 0707852, um, then in that scenario, um, you can actually increase your power a little more. Uh, until you're happy with the clarity of the person in the white dress and you're also seeing that it's clear enough for the person that's got darker skin. That's how we do it, is whenever we get a new laser, assemble a new laser, we're always going to do a test like this to make sure that the white dress isn't cracking, yet at the same time, the person's skin uh, is nice and clear. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen with you. I'm gonna show you optimization because there's, uh, there's three things that really go into a good quality file. Um, the first is the laser power. Um, the second is the point space settings. And then the third is the optimization. All right, so let's take the, this uh, photo, for example, here. Now, if I were to just click on go, it might look okay on my screen, but I can guarantee you, if you send this uh, to a crystal, you're not gonna be as happy as you could be. Now, if you're gonna send this to a customer, they might not know any better, okay? Um, if it's an online order. If it's someone that's gonna come to your display, they'll see a clear difference, because obviously your display is gonna look really, really good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my point space settings are correct. The question is, what does this mean? What does XY mean? So 0 0.07 XY is really the resolution. So what you're doing is, is you're defining how close you want those points to be. Um, and the closer they are, the higher resolution, the sharper it's gonna be. Which begs the question, why aren't we going 0.06 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 for that matter? And of course, there's two reasons why. The first is, is that the likelihood of it cracking increases. And secondly is because the burn time would be extremely long. If you went 0 0.01, you'd be multiplying your burn time by about uh, maybe eight to 10 X, okay? So with much experimentation, we have found that 0 0.07 is the safest and the best resolution that we're able to achieve without having to worry about that crystal crack. So when you're doing that first test with your laser, XY should be 0 0.07 uh, and then do your test. and um, at that point, if you're not happy with the resolution, it means you have to increase the power of the laser. Z, um, so Z is the point space setting between layers, okay? So um, what you could do, and what we find for certain lasers is, is that the dot that is being um, striped into the crystal is a little larger than other lasers. Some lasers are finer and other lasers are a little thicker. For those of you that had gotten those European lasers that were sourcing their laser box from Italy many, many years ago. Those Italian lasers were, were super, super fine. So you could get away with a Z layer distance of even 0 0.05. That doesn't increase the resolution from the front, by the way. All it does is it tightens the layers. So when you're looking at it from the side, maybe the, um, the thickness of around, around the front of the nose or would be a, a little less, okay, if you were doing 0 0.05. But um, the safest is 0 0.07 to 0 0.10. So 0 0.10 is not 0 0.01, it's 0 0.10, okay? So if you're running uh, a laser with XY 0 0.07, you think that your power is good and yet it's still cracking, before turning your power down, increase your Z layer, 0 0.10 or 0 0.09 or 0 0.08, and just take a look to see how that turns out. So that's the um, uh, point space setting. The other thing that influences the quality is obviously optimization. Now. In cockpit3d.com, you have the opportunity to have our team do the optimization. You can realize that with over 200 artists, everybody's optimization is going to be different. So they all have very, very good training on how to go grayscale, how to airbrush, and how to optimize. But that's not necessarily what you're paying them for. Cockpit3d.com is an initiative to help grow the subsurface laser engraving industry. It's to make it easy for laser operators to get their 3D files at a very, very low cost. So with the kind of margin that comes from that and the kind of reinvestment that needs to go into software, uh, it really isn't the profit side of our business. So if you really want to do optimization yourself, that, that's totally cool and I'll show you how to do it. If you are happy with the optimization you're getting back from our artists, um, you know, for I guess it's under a dollar or whatever, it speeds the process up, by all means, get them to do it as well. 
But again, really our forte, our strength uh, when it comes to time and ret returning a file to you is on the 3D side of the project. So let's do an example here of how I train artists to optimize. And this might help you guys as well. So we're gonna click on the layer. We're gonna click here and this here is integrated. As long as you have Photoshop installed and I believe you might have to make Photoshop the default launcher for texture files. Then when you click on that brush, it will launch uh, Photoshop. Now I know that many of you um, uh, use Photoshop. A few of you might be using Corel or other versions. This here is uh, a very, very old version of Photoshop, it's CS2. And it just goes to show that you don't need um, the latest uh, softwares to get good quality. So let's take a look at this. The first thing I'm gonna do, and you'll see this in, in many of the uh, trainings as well uh, on YouTube, image mode grayscale, okay? So we're looking at it the way that the laser is gonna see it in grayscale. And what a lot of new laser operators get confused with is they say, well, it looks kind of bright already, but that's because they're looking at the white sky. And you gotta remember that the 3D model doesn't have that white background. So it could be a completely white wall, yet really what matters is what he's wearing and what their facial tones are. So I like to quickly go here and click on curves and just drag my curve down a bit. And I'm looking, I'm not looking at the background. That's gonna look over bright, but don't worry about that. Just look at the faces, okay? And now I've been able to brighten the faces up. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brighten the suit up a little bit. So if I go here, my color dodge is the power of which I'm going to release um, my color dodge. And I, I like to do it at 15. So I'll make sure you're on the correct layer here on the right. So right now I'm on my curve, let's click on the background. And now you can see that it is actually getting a bit brighter. And um, this is probably a very, very easy file. So there's really not much more that I need to do over here. Um, and this here would actually be good for, uh, for the laser. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna merge. So you have two layers here. So before you re reload this or refresh this in cockpit, just merge the two layers together, make them one layer and then just click on save. This is a temporary file. So click on save. You can see it's a temp file with some um, random text up there for the file name. And then I'm gonna go back to cockpit and I'm gonna click on refresh. Now, what I'm gonna do is over here, you can see different views. So you've got your scene view, you've got your point cloud view, and you might even have social broadcast, which is going to be something. This is, I'm really excited about social broadcast, by the way, what it's gonna enable you to do with your online business is insane. We had a version one, the popularity of it ended up causing server issues. So we had to remove it because again, we're not you know, necessarily charging an arm and a leg for broadcasting. So we, uh, we removed it for now. We're gonna, we're reworking it, retweaking it so that it compresses the images and it doesn't give us server issues. So you're gonna be able to do some insane stuff with your customers marketing their 3D crystals that they bought from you for you. And I'll talk more about that um, when it's ready to release. That's going to be a 2023 initiative. But let's go back to that point cloud. This was the original point cloud. I'm going to click on go so that we can now recalculate the one that I refreshed. So this here is the one that I've refreshed now. This here is remembering what it was before. So let's click on go. And let's see the difference. And there you go. Okay, so hopefully you can see the difference now. And this here would obviously turn out a lot better than, um, uh, than the first one. All right, let's go back here to trading. Uh, I wanna show you, there is an option that people have asked me about uh, for enhancement. What does enhancement do? So I'm sure you guys must have heard about, you know, um, uh, what, what's currently being developed out there in terms of being able to retouch photos from the past. So um, we actually on our server have put together a library of, uh, I think a couple million, uh, images, several million anyway. And what it does is it takes the photo that we're getting, that we're inputting, it's comparing it against um, the library of faces and it's restructuring this face to look sharper. So I'll show you an original. All right, so if you look at her face, it looks a little blurry. Let's just look at her, for example. So it looks a little blurry and now it looks sharper. So I don't know if you can notice that on your screens, especially if you're on a mobile right now, but again, I'll do it. This here is blurry and this is sharp. And so when you select photo enhancement, that's not optimization. Optimization is where we are 
converting it to grayscale and we're airbrushing it so that the lights are lighter and the darks are a bit lighter um, so that it, it's kind of optimized for your laser. But enhancement is a separate feature, which is taking something that is from the past, something that's blurry, applying it to our library and then creating um, what you see here. So that was one of the questions we had on what is enhancement. What's the difference between projection and portrait? All right. And by the way, I'm kind of zooming through things here because I've used this for so many years. But um, uh, if you have any questions, just step in. But essentially what, what I'm doing here is that you can see this in a four perspective view. Um, I like to work in a larger single view. So that, that's what I'm just clicking on that arrow there to do that. Um, now, projection. Projection is what I used to use. A portrait was created um, as a stage two, which is what I use now. Um, and what's the difference? So with projection, what happened is, is that this was the first build of Cockpit 3D, where when I click on go and I rotate this, you'll see that there's a shadow casted from the guitar, okay? And so when someone was raising a, a toast, for example, or holding flowers in front, far away from their body, uh, it would create this very obvious shadow. What we understand is because the camera cannot see what's behind it. So it's just leaving it blank. Uh, however, um, the customer sometimes might actually complain, thinking that there's an error and you forgot to model that, that part of their body. So in order to make this less obvious to the human eye, what you want to do is you want to kind of sort of fill it with points, just kind of sort of, okay? It's not Again, we're not getting into 360 modeling where we're actually going to go in and create polygons in places that um, there aren't polygons uh, so or that the camera can't see. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to change this here to portrait mode. So again, it's under settings, edit geometry. By the way, this is being recorded. Uh, we'll edit it down and then uh, post it for you guys to be able to access as well. So if I go portrait mode, I can, I can hear set, sample radius. How strong do I want those points to fill? Do I want them to just kind of fill a little bit subtly, or do I want them to fill a little more stronger? The higher this number, the more points that'll fill, but also the longer it will take to calculate. I think we use 1.5, um, but I'm gonna keep it at three just to kind of exaggerate and demonstrate this. So now if I click on go, watch this, there you go, okay? So now it has filled this area. And if I do it at what we currently do, 1.5, save, okay. It's a little less. And if I go one. So I would actually think of a rule, okay? And this is how I train my team. I'm like, I, I don't wanna have dozens of staff doing it with different settings. So it's almost like find the setting that is the general rule for what you feel you like. Everyone's an artist. Your crystal will turn out different than my crystal. That doesn't mean that your crystal is any less better than what I create, right? So everyone is, is kind of applying to be an artist here when they're doing this. And so find that best setting, but then stick to it. So it's easy for your staff because you don't want to have different settings for different staff and then create this variable of, oh, maybe I should have done it at this, or maybe I should have done this at that, because there's going to be too many variables. So um, try and figure out that general rule and then stick to it. Now, that begs the question, when are you going to use projection mode? So projection mode is something that I'll use, for example, what's happening here is it's taking, it's calculating the space between, and it's filling that space. Now, there might be scenarios where you really want the details of the whiskers on the cat or the, the flyaway hair um, or the fur on the dog, and you don't want the fur to combine points between them. You don't want the whiskers to combine points between them. So in that scenario, when you really want that enhanced detailing of those small little you know, elements that you don't want combining points, in that scenario, you can use projection. And, um, and then it won't autofill, and you'll see those subtle details of the fur actually end up burning um, a lot more accurately, okay, um, in, in crystal. All right, let's continue on. There was one question that came about on how can we change the texture? So let's go through that one because I thought that was an interesting one. Um, so 
why is this plane facing upwards? So for any of you that are using the uh, 3D laser box, uh, you'll know um, the power of the multi-mode. Um, and so um, when you're doing multi-mode, again, it's about the variable. You don't want to create confusion on the software or amongst your staff. So the general rule at our place is every crystal has to be loaded vertically. So if the image is horizontal, no worries. And the software will rotate at 90 degrees as we did with the plane, but every crystal needs to be loaded vertically. By doing so, you again, eliminate the error of an operator accidentally loading a crystal horizontally. Um, and also on the software point of view, it makes it a lot more easier because now the software has one single table um, for each different template and all of them are vertical. So the question comes now, you've received this file back, you selected optimization to save time on a hundred different images that you, you had to get done. Again, the cost is fractional. So from a business point of view, it makes sense, but maybe out of the hundred orders that you did, there were a couple that you really didn't like the optimization of. Of course you've got, again, I told you we have over 200 artists. And so it's acceptable that maybe you're not entirely satisfied with something. So you wanna change it without having to click on redo and send it back. So in that scenario, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the, the converted file. So we have different layers here. In this case, we've got a layer for each of the text. So I'm gonna click on the brush. Now, what's important here is that you take your original texture. So this is the optimized one and you're not happy with this because of whatever reason, it's too white um, or you wanna shade it differently. So let's go to our original file here. So this is the color file. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move this over to here. We're just gonna line it up. Free transform, hold the shift button so it stays to scale. And make sure that you line it up exactly. Now I've got two layers here. First, I wanna show you the difference. So. I'm gonna turn this off and turn it on. So make sure it's exactly on, okay? It has to be exact because remember that this here is being layered onto, it's being mapped onto 3D geometry. So if you are off by the plane being to the left a little bit or up a little bit, it won't line up with the geometry that you're about to uh, refresh in Cockpit 3D. So this is lined up quite well. I'll flatten or merge, it's kind of essentially the same thing. I'll okay. go control S, which is save. And then I'll come back into cockpit here and refresh and there you go. So now you can fix this, optimize it or do whatever you want on your own without having to click on redo. Again, this here isn't a popular question because most people are, are satisfied with what they're getting back. But again, when you're at retail, for example, you need to do something quick because the customer said something, well, then you can go ahead and do it. I had a question here on um, sometimes they are burning a file and it's turning out too dark in the crystal. Sometimes it's cracking their crystal. And these were the samples that they gave me. So why don't I just maybe optimize this and show you how I would do it. So if I click on the brush here, again, it's misleading because it actually looks good here, but that's because of all the white in the background. And most of that white's not gonna be there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, my color dodge at 15%. Now, when you're doing your color dodge, just be careful that you don't unclick. So watch this, if I click and then unclick and then click again and unclick and click again and unclick, what happens is you're starting to see the circle of the brush. So hold it down, I'm holding it down. I'm moving the brush. I'm getting everything done and then it's done. Now I didn't pay much attention to this one. I, I kind of went over his arm a little bit, but I still think it's gonna pass. I'm just gonna control S, which is to save. And now I'm gonna click on refresh. And this here now looks a lot better. Let's go to another example. The other example was it's too bright. So it's cracking. So first thing I would tell this laser operator here is if it's cracking, remember, what's the first thing I talked to you about was your Z, right? Now, some people will love it like this. I mean, I remember the days where people were like, it's so hard to see, it's so hard to see. And 
you know, they would love it if we were able to actually burn it this bright. So again, it's all subjective. So you kind of have to identify really um, what it is that you want to achieve as your marketing point. And that's what you're going to display. That's what you're going to showcase. That's what you're going to stick to. And that's what you're going to defend as well, because there's, there are times where customers will give their opinion, but you kind of have to explain um, the reasoning. And then all of a sudden they'll understand, right? What you're doing is remarkable. The fact that you're able to take a flat image, offer your customer having that image made to 3D so cost effectively. I remember the days it was like $50 for every half hour just to have 3D modeled. And now you're able to do it so cost effectively. So sometimes you need to really defend your work. But uh, in this case here, if it's cracking, I would say your Z layers from 0 0.07, change it to uh, 0 0.10 first. Uh, if it's still cracking in that scenario, I would reduce your power. Um, because this should not be cracking your crystal. However, if you're not happy with the look of it, and it's not because of cracking, but you're not happy with the look of it, then in that scenario, what you can do, this is a simple one, just go to your curves. Whoops, wrong way. So I'll do that again. That's about it right there. Don't overdo it. If you overdo it, it gets too dark. So that's too dark then somewhere around there and again you can use your brush so say for example you know that his let's say that his top was too dark here it's perfect but it was too dark then you can brighten just his top a lot of your quality is really contingent on optimization it's remarkable and we can optimize i mean you'll be able to master optimizing within a couple minutes if you do enough of them right so all right what else do we have here i should i'm just going to pause for a quick second to see if Anyone has any feedback or any questions before I continue? Yeah, there was a chat message that uh, someone noticed the version of your software and th their version is quite a bit behind. So maybe uh, when you provide the video, you can provide uh, the link for everybody to, to, to you know download the latest and greatest. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. So we're gonna um, uh, provide the latest link uh, on cockpit3d.com under your login. Um, and you'll be able to download it from there. This is not 2.1, by the way, this is 2.11. So um, you're right, it is the latest version. Now, I have to say one thing, is, is that you're entering the busiest season of the year. So I have later versions than this, but I'm not installing them right now because I don't wanna have to start debugging or having any issues at the busiest time of year. So if what you've got is working okay, I would recommend that even when you see that download link online, Maybe it's better you continue using what you have until um, you're past the Christmas season and then download and install. Um, or if you have a second computer, that's okay too. Then you can download it. I don't expect you'll have any issues again because we've tested 2.11 for a long time, uh, but uh, you just never know. So um, that's just my two cents worth on that. All right, let's, um, let's take a look. At, I can't remember what this was. So I'll get into 360. Maybe that's the last example I'll do. Um, I'm going to get into heart positioning. So let's talk light maps. Light maps were created, why? I do have a question uh, that people ask is, what's the difference between bevel and margin? All right, I'll explain it. So bevel is for visual purposes. You want to send a digital preview to your customer, a bevel is going to look a lot better than a straight edge. So if I click a zero here and have no bevel, you've got a straight edge. Okay, and if, let me put zeros for margin as well. So this here is essentially the edge of this crystal. And if I go to auto size this, it's gonna go straight to the edge. What we do is we offer margin because with margin, it's gonna give us that safety space. So um, how far away from the actual edge of the crystal do we want to ensure the points remain so that it doesn't come right to the edge? Because if it comes close to the edge, it'll hit the edge and then it'll crack the glass, right? So that's the point of margin. Bevel is just aesthetic. So if I click on five, bevel, essentially what it's gonna do is it's going to create a bevel of five millimeters. And this is now going to, by default, end up being a margin because when I click on go, it's gonna cut it at the bevel anyway. So that's what it would have done for margin. See that? So let's say, for example, I don't put bevel. I guess you could ask, well, then why should I put a 555 five, five here and instead of just leaving zero, zero, zero here and put a five here? Like, 
Why do I even need margin? I can just use bevel for the look and I can use it for my space around the edge. So why do I need margin? The reason is because with bevel, you cannot select different X, Y, and Z. So it's going to apply that number to X, Y, and Z. Five on X, five on Y, five on Z. Versus with margin, I, I can have different numbers. So I can say, all right, I want five, five away from X. Maybe I want seven away from Y. And this is really where it makes a difference. Z doesn't really matter that much. So you can even put it very low. You can put it at three because there is no bevel on, on Z, right? When you're looking at a crystal, say a crystal like this, for example, it's good. this is X. So you've got your 5 mm here, your 5 mm here. You got your 5 mm here, your 5 mm here, right? So that's, that's the bevel there. Um, you've got your 5 mm here, your 5 mm here. So that's the bevel there. But you don't have a bevel going in the Z distance, right? So for Z, when the laser is burning, the laser could technically burn all the way right to the front edge. So because of that, I might just want to put three on Z, especially when I'm using thinner glass. And I want to maximize the depth of that 3D model as much as possible. So in that case, that's where you would use, um, you know, your margin and your bevel setting. We were, we were, so I hope that that, that uh, clarifies that. Okay. Next time I ask this question, someone can participate and give the answer. Um, but let's talk about light maps. What's the point of light maps? And maybe actually on light maps, I will ask if anybody has any understanding of light maps to weigh in over here right now. Why would I use light maps? Here we've got a heart. Now, margins are X, Y, Z as a square. So What's the best way for us to be able to create a margin all the way along the curve? And that's true, a light map. So light map will actually prevent this image. I'll turn it off first. Maybe everyone's just camera shy, who knows? Okay. So what's the problem here? The problem here is, is that first of all, my point cloud is going to go right to the edge here. So if I click on go, so it's come right to the edge here. And so this is gonna cause cracking on the glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our light maps on. And now you can see it creates this fade and you can control that fade through here. You've got your fall off exponent and your blur radius. So the blur radius is essentially how far away from the edge does it start? And your fall off exponent is how powerfully do you want it to fade? So do you want it to fade slowly or do you want it to fade like very sharply? So if I made this a five, for example, it's starting five away and it's almost instant. But if I make this fall off exponent 0.5 and click on go, you can see that it's, it's now kind of trailing and, and, and fading off a lot more softly. Okay, so you can control that. Let's take a look at this from the side. So you can see that because of his leg, this image is um, way too, I mean, it's, it's too further back. Now, we know these legs are not gonna show anyway, so I'm just gonna move this to the middle. So always be careful of that. Uh, however, um, if you really wanted to include the legs and the body and everything, then you do have this tool called the non-uniform scale, and you can actually make it thicker or you can make it thinner on the Z. Be careful not to, um, not to uh, do it so that it kind of warps everything. Make sure that you are locking it. So highlight this arrow in yellow and lock it. So it stays locked and it's only operating on dead. Otherwise it'll take it out of proportion on different views. All right, so let's move on to then the final part of this session and that's 360. So again, the volume of what we do is in 180 and customers sometimes ask for 360, not realizing that actually it's 180 um, that they want because the 3D pop effect is superb. I can tell you we did um, projects for the um, Musk team, Elon Musk team, um, where it was for both the companies. It was for Tesla and for SpaceX. And in both scenarios, um, uh, the EA had asked for uh, 360, but when we showed them the 180, they actually opted for that. And so it was the spaceship um, from Inspiration4, if you've seen the Netflix documentary, um, made to 3D as a 180. It was 
the um, uh, Model X for the launch of that Tesla SUV done as 180. It was fantastic. However, if someone knows that they want 360, then that's going to be added to the system soon, uh, I would say in, in the new year. But for now, you can email us. 360 is quoted. So you have to send us the image that you want made 360. If you've got different sides, it'll help with accuracy. Uh, email us. We'll give you a quote. And we'll give you a time because it does take a lot uh, longer than 180. So in this case here, um, the exercise is to do this image for a person, an image of a person whom some of you might recognize. Oh, this, okay, so if you're going to see this sort of an error here, this again, 360 is a large file. So it just depends on the computer. So I'm using a computer that is not strong to open this file. So I might not be able to demo this on this computer, in which case I'll switch to another computer. I'll just try one more time. And by the way, if you actually see out of memory exception, this might also be RAM, okay? We have this habit here of not turning our PCs off. So you might wanna actually restart your computer uh, and see if you're able to actually open the file. In this case, it's not. So I'm gonna move this over. Can you go to uh, S drive? All right, so in this case here, um, it's a 360 file. Uh, if we look at it on four or view, you'll see that it actually has the back structured as well. Okay. Now, um, with this file here, even if I, some people will actually have 360 models, when they get the file back, they're like, but it's 180, it's not 360. And that's because what they've done is they've clicked on go here. And sure enough, they're seeing that the back is missing. And that's because they were in projection mode. So what does projection do again? It, it, it by default, or in this case, they're in portrait mode, but even if it's projection by default, they are, it's shooting the point from the front. So you can do two things, okay? X-ray is good for objects. If you had like an engine or a motor or a ball, or, that's X-ray. X-ray will apply the same uh, number of uh, layers and points from all directions. So if you click on X-ray, you have three options here. Directional, it'll look best from the direction you choose. So if I choose front, it'll look best from the front. If I choose left, it'll look best from the left. So again, if you know how, let's say you had a ship or a boat and you had positioned that boat, boat in the crystal so that the front of the boat was facing the, the right-hand side, then you would probably want to um, shoot this from the right hand side. Uh, in this case here, we're going to shoot it from the front. Um, and by the way, what does multi projector surface normal mean? Multi project is essentially it's going to project it from three different uh, sides by an algorithm. So you're not going to choose that. Multi project is going to do it from either the left or right, either the top to bottom, either um, front or back, uh, and create a 360 point cloud of this model in the best form that it can. So you can try and we'll actually try it right now and see the difference. And finally, surface normal. So surface normal is, as you know, there's hundreds of polygons that are creating this, uh, this model. What if we could actually have each polygon have a point created um, from its own angle? And that's what surface normal does, okay? So we're gonna do directional first. And careful over here, um, this, is more than likely gonna crack um, because your Z factor is quite tight. Uh, also, you've got your point space settings. So remember, you're, you're shooting points now from all different angles. So it's gonna be a lot more saturated. So when you're doing 180, your 0707 is okay. But when you're doing 360, you might have to do 0710 or 0712, okay? So I'm just gonna change this to 0710 just to be safe. My number of uh, layers is going to be under X-ray. I'm going to maybe go four layers again because I have so many points coming from different angles. I don't need to have that many layers this time. My Z factor, people ask what Z factor is kind of the secret sauce. The Z factor is uh, the lower the Z factor, you go up to one. Um, it works in conjunction with the layers. So this setting here, the Z layer distance. Z factor works in conjunction with that. So if, for example, you brought your layers up, but you brought your Z factor down, it'll work together to try and increase the space in a way whereby it's not as obvious because you brought your Z factor down. Um, 
if you bring your Z layers down, so you compress your layers tight together, and you bring your Z factor down, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to be so so super, so super tight that you're going to increase the probability of it cracking. So I like to just, by general rule, keep my Z factor at two. That's what I like to do. And, and then I'll just play around with my Z layers, okay? On, uh, on X-ray, I'm talking about. On, uh, on your regular 180s, it's, as you've seen the video before, 0707852. 07XY, 07Z, eight layers, Z factor five, diffusion of two. Okay, and here's diffusion of one, diffusion of two. 07XY, 07Z, eight layers, Z factor five, diffusion of two when you're doing 180. Your Z, as I said, 07, you might want to increase that if you're using a laser that tends to crack with your Z at 07, all right? Oh, and what's diffusion? Diffusion is just a, just keep it at two, but basically, you know, sometimes when you have a super white face, you can see the rings on the forehead. So you can actually diffuse that. So we just keep it at two by default. All right, so let me click on, so let me just again check here. I have X-ray front, four, two, two, save. You can play with it. So use a, use a damaged crystal and play with it and see how does it turn out. So now I've got my, now you see the problem with this is what did I tell you? Is I said that it's gonna apply the same layers and points from all directions. So my issue with this is that when I'm looking at it from the front, the back is interrupting it. And so for those that are 360 experts uh, on, uh, on this call today, you guys are rendering the back differently than the front, than the side, right? And so you're using third-party softwares to do that. This was created to be simple. It was made for a simple laser operator to use, not for someone that you have to hire at a high wage who's an expert in that uh, field to do it. So right now we have not created on X-ray this functionality of adding lights and changing the different um, uh, renders of different perspectives. We've made it very, very simple, but we have a, an interesting workaround, which I'll show you at the end. First, I'm going to just stick to X-ray. And we're going to try multi-project. So let's see, what does multi-project look like? So you might say that this looks a little better. It's projected a little differently. I can see that it thinned out the cloak a little. Uh, and let's try sub, uh, surface normal. This is the one where it's going to shoot point in the direction of every polygon. Okay, so out of for I'm going to tell you that if this was a motor, an object, I would have been happy. But when it's a person, I'm not happy with using X-ray, and I wouldn't use X-ray. I would actually use the workaround, which I'm going to uh, show you momentarily uh, how to do. It. So instead of X-ray, what I would do with this is I would actually use portrait. Sorry, projection. I would use projection. And when you use projection, by default, you always have your front enabled. But guess what? You can actually go here and enable your back as well. Okay? Click on enable. And here, I can now actually choose the amount of layers. So I'm going to choose just one layer. And keep your fill solid off. I'll show you that at the last, um, uh, last bit of, of training here. But keep that off right now. And click on OK. And now watch this, okay? So, by the way, I want to snap this to front. I want to snap this to front view so I can click down here to do that. All right. And let's click on go and watch what happens. Isn't that beautiful? So now you've got your super clear front. The back isn't interrupting it, yet it's still there because it's only one light layer. By the way, um, I, I, I mentioned about Chill Solid. What is Chill Solid? Chill Solid is native. So if you remember, for those of you that have been around uh, in this industry uh, as long as, as I have, you'll remember that originally you couldn't do uh, texture on your 360s. It was just plain white. Remember that? So, um, so you can still do that uh, if you have a model that doesn't have texture or your client has given you something. Uh, just click on Chill Solid. Uh, and in that case, it's going to actually make it just plain white. I just don't want to crush my system with too many points. So I'm just going to go here and just make it plain white, which is pointless for this. But, you know, I mean, 
if you had a model that didn't have texture, again, like a motor or something, then this would be ideal for that. All right, last thing um, before we end today's call is go back here. People do ask, how can I edit and delete parts of this model? So when you are in theme mode, you cannot. It's all disabled here. Okay. But when you're in Twink Cloud mode, these here become enabled. So now all of a sudden, look, I don't want this white platform. I don't even like the look of it. But beyond that is, is that, again, I'm increasing the probability of cracking, especially when I'm doing 360. So I'm going to use this tool. And I'm going to cut that out. Okay. Um, this particular customer wanted their crystal done as a uh, 100 by 200 by 100. Click on OK. And the problem is it's too small, so I can just size it. Just make sure that you don't resize the point cloud. So let's say I had saved that point cloud, and then I had realized that, oh, it's the wrong size. Don't open the point cloud. Don't open that CBF, CAD, DXF, RMD, HD, BRD, PKBR file and resize it. Once you've saved the point cloud, don't touch it. It's safe. If you touch it, you're either going to cause cracking or you're going to make it look inferior. Never change the size of a point cloud. Change the theme file. So here, this is the theme. I'm going to change this, make it larger. I know that she wants inscription. So I'm going to keep some space for the inscription. Oh, actually, the inscription at the top. And uh, no, we're not doing it. Sorry, sorry. We're doing we're doing projection eight five two back. Good. We're going okay. We're going go. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on left. I'm going to click on the last cell. And I'm going to click on this here to hide those points and it's gone. Now she also wants inscription added. So if I go back to theme, it's going to, again, um, have this here. So what I do is I add this layer, the completed layer of what I like to my project. So it's gonna add this point cloud here. This is really interesting now, okay? So now I've got that there. What I can do is I can come here to this view and I can make my scene invisible. So I'm just gonna double click it. And now I've got my point cloud here. So now I can work with this point cloud. Again, don't resize this point cloud, okay? But she wants text. I don't have um, the font that she wants here. So I actually asked her, to send me an image file. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna bring it into cockpit. Okay, so this is the text that she wants. Let me launch it into Photoshop. Can you see that now? All right, well, anyway, I'm just gonna demo this for you and then I'll finish it later. But essentially she wants this text added. So what I would do is I would first of all invert this in uh, Photoshop, so then that way the text is actually white, the background is black. And then what I would do is, you see there's a crop tool here. So I'm just gonna get rid of whatever's not necessary. And by the way, whatever you're seeing as white right now, after I invert it would have been black. It's just that I'm not sharing my Photoshop screen. Um, and so you can't see it. So um, it would be something like that there. And so you can actually easily start importing 2Ds as well. And of course, remember where, where you want to put it. In this case, I'm just going to put it here, I guess. And then, so now you've got your, your 360 of the person already done. You just click on go and it'll do the, the, the text projection, 852, that's fine. We don't want back on. Don't forget to turn this off, by the way, because when you do your next project, it will remember what your last saving was. So it'll it'll start doing the wrong settings for your other projects. So I'll make sure that you update that. 
Um, and this is rasterizing the scene of these points along with that. And there we go. Okay, and then you can save this by clicking here and in whatever file format that you need. And that's it. That essentially ends this session. Then uh, I'm just gonna say, I wanna wish, uh, first of all, I wanna thank you all um, for being a part uh, of Cockpit 3D. I know many of you couldn't join. Um, so uh, for those that couldn't join, I hope that this video recording will help you as well. Um, thank you for being part of it. Thank you for all of your support. It really means the world. The feedback that you send us um, motivates us uh, to, to continue developing. Uh, and I wanna wish you all a very successful, profitable holiday season. Take care, bye-bye.